Many of you have, down in the comments section, asked, Florida Maquis, you haven't talked about Antarctica in a very long time. Over three weeks. What's happened? What's changed? We thought you were against the current president, and now all of a sudden you've endorsed him. Well, it's two questions, and in today's video I'm going to try to answer both of them with basically the same idea. As far as the current leader goes, four years ago, three and a half years ago, we had more options. Options we don't have now. The battlefield has changed. Strikingly. The law and order society is not up for debate. I was watching Cloud TV, K-L-O-W-D TV. If you don't have it, you need to have it because it's really what Fox used to be a long time ago, back when it was interested in telling the truth. And they actually have InfoWars on 24-7. And for a few minutes, I was listening to Alex Jones talk, and he was discussing with one of his compatriots how he couldn't understand why the current leader was going along with this, going along with that, and if only there were a third-party option. And I about fell out of my chair. Because that was the argument I was making three and a half years ago. Never made the argument for the parentheses D. Ever. They were never an option. But I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, wait a minute. Okay, we kind of understand that, I guess. But what does that have to do with Antarctica? Well, for there to be an expedition of any kind to this continent a real citizen's expedition. Certain truths are going to have to be accepted. And I would like to use this very old TV series as an example. This is Wagon Train. Now, the plot was very simple. A couple of guys on the right, they were in charge of this long wagon train, an expedition of sorts, heading out to the western frontier of this continent. And their job was to get everybody out there safely. And the plot, every single time, was somebody decided they knew better than these two guys on the right. And they went off and did something on their own that put the entire expedition at risk. And these two guys had to figure it out how to fix it. That was literally the plot of every single episode of Wagon Train. But it was still a good series. Because it taught you the importance of following orders. You see, this guy is largely lauded as some type of a genius. When you grow up and become an adult, you realize he's a romantic and somewhat of a petulant child. The individual has always had to struggle to keep from being overwhelmed by the tribe. If you try it, you will be lonely often and sometimes frightened. But no price is too high to pay for the privilege of owning yourself. That's great. If you want to go hop on a plane and fly down to Punta Arenas by yourself and go explore Antarctica, more power to you. to you. God bless you. We'll even pray for you. But if you're going to be part of an expedition, you're going to have to understand something. There are some very unpopular, inconvenient truths you're going to have to accept. The first is we follow orders or people die. We follow orders, or people die. And that's just the reality of it. Anyone who's going to be part of an expedition to Antarctica is going to have to be somebody who is trained in this and okay with this. Have you ever put your life in someone else's hands? Ever asked them to put their life in yours? This is, of course, all from A Few Good Men, the movie. A lot of good wisdom in that movie. You see, recently, people in this country, largely identifying themselves as patriots, were asked to do something that was inconvenient and uncomfortable, and it was an order they didn't agree with or they didn't understand. So they decided, meh, nah, Nope, 
not going to do it. It's inconvenient for me, and I don't understand it, and I have people around me who say that's probably not important, so I'm not going to follow that order. I'm not going to follow that order because I don't like it and it's inconvenient. That will not fly in Antarctica. Can't have those kind of people. Cannot have those kind of people. So while it's very disappointing for me, I enjoyed greatly talking about Antarctica. I don't know what the point is. Apparently, we are too immature yet as a people to consider trying to colonize Antarctica because you would need people that were willing to sacrifice and put aside their own personal petty grievances and discomforts for the greater good. Willingly, you would need that. You could not have a bunch of people who decide, who think that command and control is done by committee. You just can't have it. Even these guys followed orders and put aside their own personal comforts. A lot of people don't realize that most knights were put into their armor. They needed another person's help to do it, and they stayed in that armor for sometimes weeks at a time. Incredibly uncomfortable, unsanitary. It was a sacrifice. Being a knight was an honor, but it was a much greater sacrifice. Jesus even prayed, if it be God's will, to let that cup pass from him. It was a sacrifice by choice, and he wore a crown of thorns. And this is what you're being asked to do when it's too high a bar? It's a bridge too far? You see, I don't understand that. And I know a lot of guys out there listening to me, having served time in the military and everything we were asked to do, we don't understand the big deal either. This is my newest design. It's one of, well, it would have been one of 18. Now it's one of 15. Because there's a group of people out there who have pretty much sealed their fate. Guaranteed defeat. Because every time something comes down the pike, that makes them uncomfortable. Or doesn't agree with their little sensibilities or offends their little eyeballs. They have to go run to government or run to whoever's in charge of cancel culture and make sure that nothing exists in the world that's offensive to them. You see, that's not an enemy I'm afraid of. That's not an enemy I have any consideration for that or any respect for. They have uh, the Bless Your Heart movement has taken down three of my, I guess it would be 18 masks. And those who had the foresight to order them have some collector's items on their hands, the Dixie flag, anonymously deplorable, and probably part of the problem, Molan Labe, uh, Trump F Your Feelings mask. But there are still 15 more at the store. And that's here. There's also die-cut stickers, pillows, See, this is something they weren't counting on, a store like this. You see, they knew people that followed uh, Donald Trump or supported Donald Trump would push back against this. They didn't think anybody would just improvise, adapt, and overcome and create a store that could be used to help give Donald Trump four more years, which is what we need right now. It's our only choice. Is it our best choice? Was it our best choice in 2016? No, I don't think so. I think it would have been a much uh, greater argument and it would have been a step toward winning the greater war to have an election between Gary Johnson, the Libertarian, and Jill Stein, the Green Party. Because while I didn't agree totally with either one of those people, to push the parentheses D and parentheses R out of uh, contention would have been winning the greater war. In 2016, but now we don't have those viable candidates anymore. 
So we don't have a choice. We really don't have a choice. But you do. You currently have 12, 15, 15 choices. For now. Who knows which one they're going to take down next. Who knows what image they are going to decide is just too offensive for their poor, poor little eyeballs. Walking down the road. Oh my gosh, look at that thing that I had no problem with two months ago, flag of Mississippi, prior to Memorial Day. No one said a word about it. Millions of black people in Mississippi. Never had a problem with it until two months ago. And then all of a sudden, it's entirely offensive to the entire bless your heart community. So they have to retire that flag. How sad and pathetic you are. How sad and pathetic is the bless your heart movement. See, there's, and I'll leave with this. See, there's another uh, piece of art from Hollywood called Full Metal Jacket about another story of soldiers who don't follow orders. Very end of the story, there's a young girl who's a sniper and she takes advantage of some Marines who ever so temporarily lost track of situational awareness and didn't follow orders and this was the result this is what they had to endure the loss of their buddies and that's the reality and for those of you i know it's like wait a minute hold on hold on i thought you were against the government being so powerful and overreaching i've never said i was against command and control And as far as the situation in Chicago goes, that's my answer. I wouldn't send federal troops to their Seattle if it were me to make that decision. I'd leave them to the mother-loving rats, especially the south side of Chicago. It'd be the great... The ads would write themselves for the upcoming election. This is what happens when you leave the parentheses D in charge of a city. This is what happens when you leave the parentheses D in charge of a city. You get Chicago. You get Portland. You get Seattle. You get Detroit. You get Cincinnati. You get Philly. Leave them to the mother-loving rats. That would be my answer. Like, share, subscribe.